So my name is Lauren, and I work for Paralyzed Veterans of America's Veteran Employment Program, PAVE. We provide direct service support to veterans, military spouses, and their caregivers to help them find meaningful employment, volunteer, and educational opportunities. We're very excited you've joined us today for our virtual engagement seminar, PAVE Connect. This is an opportunity for you to interact directly with both PAVE staff and with um, employers, such as CACI. I will admit some of you probably know them as CACI. So if we use the term CACI, I know that CACI is the same thing. I think it's just a little bit part of the vernacular. Um, with us today, we have Major General Gary Patton. Hang on one second. I'm going to try to mute people. If you, again, a good reminder to please mute your phones. Uh, we have Major General Gary Patton, who is the Vice President for Military and Veterans Affairs with CACI. We also have Denise Gordon and Robert Bartlett, who are part of the CACI team. Uh, this is a great organization. They have opportunities available across the country. I think you're really going to be excited about learning more about these. Opportunities are in IT, Intel, government, defense, cyber, uh, business system space, electronic warfare. So if you've done it in the military, CACI probably has an opportunity for you. Another great thing just to keep in mind is General, right before I hand it over to him, is they have opportunities for both cleared and non-cleared individuals. So don't assume that every opportunity, you have to have a, a background clearance. Again, this is something General Patton will go over, but keep that in mind as you go through this. So for those of you who may have transitioned out more than a couple of years ago, there are still some great opportunities for you to join this great company. And with that, sir, I will turn it over to you and let you run us through the, your presentation. Again, don't hesitate to ask questions if you have them. Oh, great. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, that, was a, that was a tremendous introduction. Uh, you know, I've been on a, a Zoom call here probably every week for the last uh, three or four months, and, uh, and that's the best intro yet. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time and uh, for the PAVE team uh, really giving us this time to engage with your, uh, your, your clients, with your veterans. And uh, thank you, veterans, for your time and your service. Uh, hopefully, you know, I, we brought some content here today that I think will make you uh, make your time worthwhile, the time that you've invested in spending with us here for the next uh, hour or so. Um, my name's uh, Gary Patton. I run our Military and Veterans Affairs program at uh, CHCI. Uh, this is our team. We are a dedicated team. I'm going to get into that here in a second uh, and what we do. But uh, first off, I want to just uh, tell you that over the course of uh, you know this presentation, I'm going to introduce you to uh, CACI. We're a federal contractor. We're a national security company. We are hiring now. We've been hiring consistently uh, on the order of, uh, you know, somewhere between 100 and 150, 200 veterans a month all through the pandemic. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we have transitioned our work from almost a 100% a uh, client site uh, posture to now 70% of our work is being done remotely. Uh, what that work will look like in the future remains to be seen, but uh, we've been very successful uh, gaining new contracts and performing on the ones we have, uh, again, in the national security space during and throughout the pandemic, and we've been hiring throughout. We're hiring today. I have seven jobs uh, later in the presentation that I brought that we are hiring for now uh, in concentrations where I was told some of the uh, you participants are, are located. So hopefully it'll interest you. Uh, I'm going to talk up front a little bit about the company and our culture. I get a lot of questions about culture uh, in, in presenting uh, and, and something they need to look at as you choose a company where you work. And then again, we'll, we'll transition into the job search uh, and, and look at uh, a number of different jobs that may interest you that we're hiring for now. First off, here's our team or a three person team. We're dedicated full time. All we do is support veterans. We got a combined 64 years of service of, among the three of us. Uh, just uh, there, we're all on the call here today, uh, you know, on this picture, on this slide from left to right, that's Robert Bartlett holding the uh, Army sniper rifle. Uh, Robert served in uh, the Baghdad area in 2004. He's retired now and he's, uh, he's there on the, on the right in the, uh, the dark blazer. He is our veterans engagement specialist. Chances are, if you're talking to uh, CHI mm -hmm. and you're a veteran, you're going to be chatting with, talking to, or emailing with Robert. If you haven't already, uh, you, you, you will be uh, 
hearing from him or talking to him, if, if you reach out to us, his uh, contact information there is at the bottom, R. Bartlett at uh, chci.com. He also mans our 24-7 uh, veterans email box, uh, khaki veteran support at, at khaki.com, also on the bottom of the slide. In the center of the picture, uh, of the three pictures, is Denise Gordon. Denise uh, was an Air Force uh, senior NCO. This picture is taken in a 2003 time frame at a Scud bunker in Kuwait somewhere. Uh, and now that's Denise in the center of the picture on the far right. Denise is our senior advisor on veterans engagement for this company. She's been in, here over a dozen years uh, doing uh, what she does now and also working on uh, diversity and inclusion for the company. A, a long time uh, CCI veteran as well as Air Force veteran. Uh, and that's me on the far right of the, the trio there. Uh, I'm the one holding up that big rock. Uh, that picture is taken outside of Fallujah in the uh, springtime of 2005. We had just completed the invasion of Fallujah in the fall of the previous year. That was the first of my uh, four years uh, overseas in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and now I'm, that's me on the right in the uh, suit and tie. I'm the, uh, you know, running the, uh, the veterans program. We urge any of you to reach out to any of the three of us. Uh, we'll respond. Uh, what we do for veterans, uh, we, we help you in the job search process. We can do re resume coaching. Uh, we, uh, once we identify suitable jobs that you're uh, qualified and interested in, we then uh, seek, you know, want you to tell us when you apply to jobs so we can take that information and alert hiring teams of your credentials and application. That's kind of an inside job for us. Uh, we like to reference and advocate for the veterans who we meet, who we know, uh, especially through engagements like today, uh, and advocate for you with our hiring team. That's not a guarantee to being hired, but it's a really good step in the right direction. Just a little bit about our company. Again, uh, CACI, we are a national security company. What that means is we provide technology and expertise to our customers in the uh, national, security, national security space and also in uh, government transformation. Uh, we're a federal contractor. Uh, we've been doing this uh, for a while. Here's uh, our company at a glance. You can see over on the far left, uh, we're headquartered in uh, Arlington, Virginia. We got some overseas uh, locations as well. We've been doing this over 57 years uh, since 1962 and we've been hiring veterans since day one. Our chairman of the board, who's a long time uh, an original member of CHI, is a Navy veteran. Uh, we have uh, our, our uh, presidents, you know, one of our presidents in the company is a veteran. We have veterans at every level of service and, and role within our, uh, our company. Um, you can see uh, the split there of our revenue. About two thirds of what we do is with business with the Department of Defense. The other uh, clients are uh, civilian uh, federal agencies, uh, mainly in the intelligence community. Uh, all of the intelligence agencies are our clients in the intelligence community. Also other federal clients, uh, Transportation Security Administration, Department of Homeland Security, uh, Department of State, Department of Justice, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Those are all clients of uh, CACI. Uh, we're really proud of uh, how we stand in the industry. Uh, we've got some accolades and recognitions there that you can see. We're also uh, a best of the best top veteran friendly company rated by US Veterans Magazine. We are the 2019 Hire Heroes USA Partner of the Year uh, and a lot of other uh, recognitions and uh, and, and status is there to go with that. Uh, bottom line, we're a veterans friendly company. We greatly value character. We we'll put a lot of uh, emphasis on that and the culture of our ethics and integrity and excellence. I'm gonna talk about that, uh, talk about that in a couple other slides. Close to $6 billion company, 23,000 employees worldwide. Almost a thousand of those employees are located and working over in overseas in combat zones. And, uh, and we got about 120 offices worldwide, but right now 70% of the company, like I said earlier, is working from home. So how many of those offices remain open as we uh, kind of come on the other side of the pandemic uh, remains to be seen. We're working with clients right now to try and figure that out. Um, many of the jobs you may see on our career site today listed as uh, on, on in certain locations may very well in the future be remote offerings. Again, I can't say with certainty, but those are things we're looking at uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the months ahead. 
Uh, we operate in 12 different business markets. Uh, it's a busy slide, but I just want to point out a couple of the type of some of the type of work we do. See in the upper left hand corner, it says business systems. Uh, one of the business systems we're involved in is with a client uh, in the Army, the integrated pay and personnel system for the Army, which is the pay and personnel system of record for the active Army Guard and Reserve. That's a CACI contract. Uh, we've developed, integrated, and deployed the, the Guard's pay and personnel system, and now we're working on the reserves and the active force with the, the Army. It's a huge contract. Of course, you can imagine the type of work on that contract. A lot of software developers, integrators, and now trainers and deployers as we deploy that system across the uh, active and reserve forces and train the trainers on how to use that system. Enterprise IT at the top of the center column. That's another big uh, business market. Uh, some of our clients there, uh, the NGA, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. We just uh, want a contract providing enterprise IT support for that agency from Soup the nuts on uh, IT, uh, tech support, uh, network operators, system administrators, uh, cybersecurity specialists, vulnerability analysts, uh, program managers, you name it. Uh, we're on that project uh, running the IT system backbone for the NGA. We do the same for Transportation Security Administration. We do the same for uh, a lot of the U.S. forces in Korea, and we are, we're doing the same for U European Command in Europe. So uh, around the world, uh, a lot of DOD and federal clients uh, where we are running their enterprise IT structure. We're also involved in a lot of intelligence operations and services. Uh, again, most of, the, most of the employees that we have overseas are serving in some intelligence role. In many cases, sitting side by side with their military counterparts, providing HUMIN, SIGIN, ELIN, all source, uh, open source, uh, intelligence type analysis for our military clients both uh, abroad and at home. But a lot of those positions overseas are intelligence support positions. We value veterans. 38% uh, of our company are veterans. Military spouses are current serving members of the Guard and Reserves. That's uh, over 8,100 members. Uh, employees today are in that group that I just described. 9% of our employees are disabled veterans, over 1,800. Uh, you can see the hiring numbers there over the last uh, couple of FYs. Uh, this year, fiscal year 20, our fiscal year runs from June to July, so we're just two days away. Tomorrow being the last day of fiscal year 20, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll total that figure and have an updated, uh, in the next briefing, we'll have an updated number there. We're going to come in at about 2,200 new veteran hires in the course of FY20, and that represents 40% of all hires for the year for the company, which is a big number. Uh, last year it was 47%, this year at 40%, a slight drop off from last year, a lot of it attributable to the pandemic, uh, the, the uh, stop movement, uh, the overseas movement freeze that has affected some of our contracts and the military uh, transitioning as well. But uh, again, a good year for us, over 2,200, somewhere around 2,200 employees, 40% of new hires this year being veterans. Um, we put our money where our mouth is. Uh, this year ending FY20, 84% of all our donated funds went to the benefit of troop and veteran organizations. Last year it was 85%. Two years before that it was 75%. So four years in a row, over 75% of donated funds going to troops and veterans. Again, we uh, put our money where our mouth is. We have a, a national campaign. I know uh, Lauren and her staff have seen these products, our monthly flyers, where we outreach, uh, we reach out to veterans uh, as part of this uh, campaign. And we advertise in seven different job categories. You can see them listed at the bottom. These are the areas that best align, most closely align with the uh, MOSs and, uh, and ratings and, and so forth that you bring out of the service. This is not the only uh, areas that uh, we think uh, MOS is aligned with, but these are the, the primary ones. Uh, we got other positions in marketing, uh, human resources, uh, and, and lots of other areas, but these are seven listed here, intelligence uh, through project management are really the, the big seven in terms of the bulk, uh, the core of the work that we do in the company and the positions that best align with the military occupational specialties. Now a little bit about culture. Uh, we always get questions about culture. Uh, we urge our uh, veterans in transition to look for companies where they see a good match in the culture. Well, how do you know that? Well, you can look at things like I'm going to show you here in the next couple of slides. We're a culture with shared values. 
with the armed forces. You can see the, uh, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard value statements here with a, a value in each statement highlighted in red. Honor, commitment, integrity, and respect. Well, well those four, honesty, commitment, integrity, and respect are the, the values uh, in the CACI value statement. So you could say that our corporate value statement is literally taken from the value statements of the services. Uh, now, you know, we don't have Marines listed here. They're part of the Department of Navy. We don't have the Space Force, our newest service listed. They're part of the Air Force. But we've got all the emblems at the bottom, all six of them. And the one at the very bottom is uh, the tip of the inverted pyramid there, a triangle, is the Space Force. We are working with Space Force on some future contracts. Uh, I'm, but uh, again, we got work uh, with each of these services. And, and most importantly, we, the point here is we, we share the values of those services. We also uh, are a culture where we appreciate our serving military employees. Um, we have just last month in May, Military Appreciation Month, we sent 108 thank you cards out to all of the current serving active duty guard and reservists in the company. They were out on active duty in the month of May. They got a thank you card and a CHI flag lapel pin. Uh, this is a thank you card signed by our CEO and the pin was uh, really just uh, attached to each card uh, as a symbol of our gratitude and respect for those uh, guardsmen and reservists. And we welcome them back to the company, the positions they left, because we know they will enrich our company with the experience they bring from uh, their active duty time. Many of those were on the front lines or are still serving on the front lines of the coronavirus battlefield across the country. We're a culture where we show appreciation for our veteran employees. This picture, series of pictures is taken from our Oklahoma City Shared Services Center uh, a recognition ceremony they held last year in May, Military Appreciation Month. We didn't have the same live ceremony this year. There are other virtual recognitions and so forth, but the pandemic kept our live uh, ceremonies uh, to a minimum. On this day last year, uh, it was uh, have a donut and thank our 49 Veteran Employees Day. And those red, white, and blue donuts were consumed by all members of that celebration. Uh, again, 49 employees at the Shared Service Center being uh, recognized by their peers, part of our culture. We're a culture where we appreciate our military spouses. This year, 62 military spouse employees and family members are recognized on our spouse honor wall. It's the third year we've run the honor wall. We ran the honor wall. It went live on May 8th. Why May 8th? That was Military Spouse Appreciation Day. And this picture in front of my home uh, is uh, Marine Paul and Crystal Herlocker. Uh, Paul says, uh, thank you for the opportunity to show the amazing woman she is, speaking of his wife. Of course, it's not my home. I'm just joking. Uh, I'm not sure what home this is. It's a big one <laughs> with a fancy gate. But, uh, but that is Paul and Crystal. And Paul is a, uh, an employee at CHI and Crystal's his spouse. And he's thankful for, for having her. And uh, she would, this was just one of 62 awesome pictures, uh, tributes to military spouses on our Military Spouse Appreciation Honor Wall last month. <clears throat> We're a culture of community service. Again, last year we did this. We didn't do community service this year because of the pandemic, but last year we raised the flag at a Air Force veteran's home. Uh, Sergeant Donald Rice uh, had a flag. He'd never flown it. It'd been in his family for years. Uh, we went out there and dug a hole, planted a flagpole, and raised the flag with Donald uh, for the first time, first flag raising of his family legacy flag in his front yard. Uh, it was a nice uh, community service project. We did a couple others around the country. Uh, this particular one was selected as an Emmy Award nominating news story in a local news uh, in the uh, in the uh, Northern Virginia area. So that really concludes the uh, the first uh, portion here, talking about uh, CHI, uh, what we do as a company, the type of work we do. Uh, and the culture that we have uh, in, in our company. It runs across the uh, company, top to bottom, left to right. Um, we are a company where we value veterans. We value the leadership, the integrity, the ethics, the training, the teamwork, uh, self-discipline that they bring to our company. Um, and, and really in these challenging times, the times of the pandemic, the veterans mission focus initiative uh, and, and, and creativity 
these are things that make veterans even more valuable to a workforce. And I've made this presentation to the senior leaders and hiring managers across the company, recognizing that this is a time we should be hiring more veterans because veterans are used to facing adversity and leading in adversity and executing their missions in adversity, like the kind of adversity we're seeing now uh, around the world with the, the pandemic and, and everything else going on. Uh, your military experience counts. Your skill sets are definitely transferable. We have many jobs, hundreds of jobs in intelligence, information systems, cyber, logistics, engineering, training, project management. These are areas that serve our national security clients and know that you've had those skills uh, while you're in uniform. Okay, your security clearance really counts as well. Uh, as Lauren mentioned, uh, majority of our positions, due to the work that we do, due to the client's environment we operate in, uh, require a current security clearance. We're going to talk about clearances as it relates to the jobs that I brought. I think I'm going to answer a lot of your questions about uh, security clearances, but the, you know, if, if you're applying to a job and it requires a current clearance, it's going to say that on the job description and you should put that on your resume. We actually hear from veterans who say, well, I was told not to put my clearance on a resume. Well, if you're applying to a job that requires a security clearance, you should absolutely put it on your resume because it is a qualifying requirement. Uh, there are also a number of jobs, I'm gonna show you how to find them, a number of jobs that are a company that do not require a current security clearance, but, but ones in which you can apply without a current clearance, and in some cases you can obtain a clearance while you're in that job, because we'll investigate for you. Those are the exception, not the rule. The majority of the positions do require a current security clearance. We're gonna get into that as we look at our career site and some of the jobs we brought here today. Careers.chci.com, that's our career site. Here's what it looks like when you go there. Uh, we change the pictures around, but the structure remains the same. Um, you can search for jobs in a number of different ways. On the far left bottom, you can search by keyword. What do we mean by that? Well, you wanna look for jobs uh, in AFRICOM, African, uh, Africa Command, uh, but shortened as AFRICOM. You can put that keyword in there. You're going to come up with about uh, 70 or so jobs uh, that support AFRICOM, one of our clients. Uh, you could put cybersecurity in there. You could put uh, entry level in there. You're going to come up with a bunch of different ways, word combinations. You can search for jobs on your own. Uh, then moving towards the right bottom of the slide, you can also search by state and job category. You can combine those two. So you could do uh, IT jobs in Texas. You could do logistics jobs in Virginia. Uh, you, you, could do, um, you could do all the jobs in Ohio, uh, which I actually did a couple hours ago and found that we have nine jobs in Ohio. Hopefully some will relate to the, the people in this uh, briefing. I, I was told some of you are from Ohio. Uh, but anyway, that's a way to, to uh, combine the state and the category. We have about 12 categories there. Uh, and that's a very user-friendly site. now. At the bottom center of this slide, you can see the words advanced search. Uh, you click on advanced search and it's gonna take you to a broader screen. It's gonna show you jobs organized by location, metropolitan area, not state, but metro areas. And also it's gonna be or, uh, a listing organized by security clearance. One of the categories for security clearance is none. So you can search for top secret jobs. You can search for secret jobs. You can search for jobs that do not require clearance. Those would be the ones under none. There's about 400 jobs right now, plus or minus some that you would find in that search for jobs without a, that do not require clearance. So if you don't have one, that's the place to go. Uh, now we're gonna transition and we're gonna go into uh, seven specific jobs where I have borrowed information from our career site. But before that, I wanted to pause and see if there are any questions up to this point, up to this point about uh, the company, the, the, uh, the values, uh, what we do, the type of work we do and so forth. Again, we're gonna get into detail on job descriptions um, with teaching points on every slide to follow. But uh, before that, just pause for a moment to see if there's any questions or comments up to this point. Dominic, how are we looking? We have one question and it's about visas. Uh, the question just says they were looking at a training development position with AFRICOM in Germany. Would they need to work through the visa requirements before applying? Okay, so um, do you mean 
the visa to go overseas or a work visa uh, as a non-U.S. citizen? Which type of visa are we talking about? I'm assuming it's a, a visa that would be used to uh, as, as, support as a you know to go overseas. Yeah, I would assume that. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, right now, all the positions overseas. Uh, or at least the ones in Africa, I'm sure, are frozen for hiring uh, because of the stop movement orders that have been in place. So nobody's coming home and nobody's going over. I'm sure that's going to be relieved, uh, changed here in the uh, weeks or months ahead. That didn't answer your question. Um, but uh, you know, in terms of whether you need a visa or not to go to the overseas assignment, if you were selected for that position, that's a good question. We ought to be able to research that. Uh, Denise or Robert on the call, do you happen to know the answer off the top of your head to that question, please? Um, hi, this is Denise. I would have to research that as well. Probably the uh, probably safe to go ahead and apply or just, you know, send us your resume and uh, we could forward it to the um, individual that owns that specific job. So if you have the six digit number of the position, just um, send it our way and we can check to see yeah. if there are specific requirements. Yeah, thanks Denise. You know, uh, there's some countries that don't, you can travel to that don't require a visa. I'm not even sure if Germany is a company that requires a visa. Uh, it may be a company, a country that does not require a visa for US citizens. In that case, you wouldn't need it if you're working overseas in a country where a visa is required uh, and again depends on the status of forces agreement and, and, and a number of other things uh, you know perhaps a visa would be required I have seen um, positions that call you know it, it says uh, you know US citizenship is required but that really is as, as it relates to the eligibility for a clearance not so much the passport visa piece so um, my feeling is you know First off, we'd, we would research whether a visa is required for the particular country uh, and then kind of go forward from there. And my recollection is a visa is not required in Germany, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll follow up on that. Well, this is Robert. Uh, do not need the visa. Yeah. Say that again, Robert. We, we just got a part of that. Need, from my understanding, you do not need the visa before you apply. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we'll uh, we'll take that question and uh, research it, especially as it applies to the jobs in Germany that you mentioned, and uh, we'll get an answer back to the PAVE team. Any other questions right now, Dominic? Yeah, we have one other question, um, or two other questions, but one is about if they, they said they had a secret clearance in the past, how can they renew that? Um, okay. What does that process look like? Okay, all right. What's the other, we're gonna address that in one of the uh, jobs we, we touch on here next. What's the next question? Uh, yeah. It's it looks like, go ahead, Dom. Uh, it, it's also about uh, clear uh, clearances. So I'll let you address that okay. uh, moving forward. Yeah, we always get a lot of questions on clearance. We're gonna, we're gonna touch on that here. Let me get into the couple of the job descriptions and and if the and if I don't answer the, the clearance question, uh, we'll circle back to it, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna address that in, in detail. Uh, okay, so I got seven different jobs, different locations. Uh, you know, Dominic told me that uh, the concentration of, of attendees here were in uh, three areas in the country, uh, the National Capital Region, DC, Virginia, and Maryland. Uh, secondly, uh, Ohio. Thirdly, California, and then a fourth, Texas. So they actually told me four areas. So I've got jobs uh, in this group of seven from each of those areas uh, and sort of a, across the board in, in a number of different job categories and also clearance, a variety. Uh, again, this is just, these are just seven samples from our, our career site. Uh, it's to whet your appetite more than anything uh, to get into the career site and find the job that's best aligned and best, the, the best one that matches up for you. But uh, Let's start here in Northern Virginia. Uh, this particular job, again, this is an extract from our, from our career site. This isn't exactly how it would look on the career site, but I've extracted the key information and I've highlighted some of the things we want to talk about as teaching points in each of these job descriptions. And guess what? On first slide, the top 
line highlighted in yellow is security clearance. Uh, this job, the job number, a six digit number, 235416, every job has a six digit number. This is in Arlington. This is one of 900 plus jobs in Northern Virginia. This is an entry level job in the information technology category and top secret uh, clearance status means you must be current to must be current with that top secret clearance to start. That's the way it's described on the job description for this particular job. Uh, that means your clearance has to be top secret and current at the time that you're hired. Now, other jobs uh, may say something like uh, top secret, uh, I may say security clearance, none, clearance status, top secret obtainable which means that your clearance may have expired in the top secret or secret or some other area, but that as part of the job, you're going to be uh, investigated and you have to be clearable to that, that designated level, uh, which if, in the case of the one question, if you had a top secret and it expired because top secret is only good for five years, uh, it expired and now you're looking at a job, well, you couldn't apply to this job that I'm showing you on this slide, but you could apply it to a job where it said, uh, you know, no clearance required at the time of start, but top secret obtainable. The fact you had a top secret clearance at one point in time would, would indicate you're clearable to that level. The majority of our positions require the clearance to be current at the time of start. When, when the clearance is, can be obtainable as part of the job, it's described that way in the job description. So you'd be looking for jobs like that. You will find those jobs generally in the category of none when you're looking on our advanced search page for jobs by type by security clearance, you'd want to start with the with the you you know if your if your top secret clearance is expired and you have no current clearance, you'd want to start with the by looking in the in the jobs where no clearance is required at the time of start. There's another third category where sometimes an upgrade is is available. In other words, you may come into the job uh, the security clearance to start is top secret, but the job description will say. Uh, counterintelligence polygraph uh, level clearance obtainable, or you must be willing to undergo a polygraph examination to upgrade your clearance from top secret to top secret with CI polygraph. Uh, and, and again, that would be spelled out in the job description um, of that particular job. Get, now, looking at the other parts of this job description, uh, we're supporting a this job supporting a Department of Homeland Security client, providing pretty standard uh, cybersecurity work there as, an, as a cyber analyst and specialist using uh, cyberspace, uh, cybersecurity tools, uh, making presentations and, and all those sorts of things uh, listed here in the job description. The job requirements. Okay, this job, every, every job is different uh, when it lists requirements. So you have to read the Read the uh, all of the requirements to make sure you know you can assess your qualifications with each individual requirement. This one requires a BA or a BS BS degree in computer science or an other related technical degree. Gives a couple examples there of other technical degrees. Um, some jobs you'll see the job description will say uh, experience in lieu of a degree is acceptable. That's not the case in this job. This job doesn't list an experiential. Uh, 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 experience in lieu of the degree. So this case, you, you got to have the degree. Uh, and then in terms of experience, zero to three years of direct, direct related work experience in cybersecurity and related IT field. The fact that it says zero there makes it entry level. You could literally come from the military, uh, maybe with a, a, a with with transitioning through a, a an IT boot camp type of program. Onward Opportunities, uh, Microsoft, uh, they run uh, IT boot camps, that sort of gain some skills, but essentially, you know, no related work experience. You may be transitioning from and making a career change from the military to, to cybersecurity. This is the type of job you'd want to be looking for if you're making that type of career change, because this job allows you to have zero years of direct related work experience. Now, it helps to have proficiency in basic Python scripting. That's listed as a requirement. And it's nice to have, which means you don't, it's not required, but it's nice to have Security Plus or some of the other cybersecurity certifications. Uh, nice to have, what does that mean? Well, that means that's a differentiator. If you have it, it should be on your resume. And it could make the difference between you and someone else, all other things being equal, because you have what's nice to have, you know, sort of that extra level of uh, certification and credentials there that maybe other candidates may not have. 
We always tell our veterans to tailor your resume to the job you're applying to. You may construct an initial generic resume, but you know generic resumes may not work for particular specific in meeting, showing that you meet the specific qualifications for a job. In this case, uh, if, if you know, uh, you would want to add Python scripting. You would want to add your Security Plus or other security certifications and credentials. You'd want to spell out what type of degree you had. Again, don't leave it to chance that some uh, that you know the recruiter is going to figure this out on their own. I had a veteran over the weekend, just this past weekend, uh, apply to a, a number of jobs. Uh, he was a career logistician in the Army. The job required to be proficient in four different Army uh, logistic systems, software-based computer systems. Um, he didn't list any of those four on his resume. He applied to jobs that required those four systems to, you know, experience in each of those four systems. Uh, he was screened and rejected for all the jobs he applied to. Why? Uh, he asked me, uh, I'm a seasoned veteran of 20 years in the Army. I'm a logistics expert. Why can I, how could I possibly be rejected for the four, for the several uh, logistics jobs I applied to? The answer is he didn't qualify. Now, in fact, he did have those experience in the four systems, but he didn't list it on his resume. So how would anyone know? Well, his comment was, well, everybody knows that. And I have to assume that someone would know I was a logistician in the army for 20 years that I have experience in those four systems. No, please don't make that assumption. Don't make that assumption. Uh, don't leave anything to chance. You are your best representative. Tailor your resume to the job you're applying to and, and look at the job requirements and tailor your resume accordingly. Uh, he's actually now work, reworking his resume to show the experience he has in those four systems so we can get him back under consideration uh, for the jobs he applied to. But uh, don't make the assumption that other people are going to somehow recognize your background and, and, make, and, and figure out what you've done and what proficiencies and competencies you have. Don't leave that to chance. Questions on job number one. Open, funded, we're hiring now. That means funded means we're on contract. Uh, and the fact we don't have somebody in this job means we're losing money and we want to fill it soon. Uh, just three weeks ago, I did a presentation to a uh, citizen soldier for life, National Guard, a bunch of National Guard, uh, National Guardsmen. Uh, I had 10 jobs in that briefing. All 10 today, when I researched them for current open uh, positions, all 10 were filled. So uh, that was three weeks ago. Uh, you know, th so the moral of the story is don't sit around and wait. Uh, you got to have a resume locked and loaded. You ought to be able to tailor it very quickly and you need to get your applications in and then contact our veterans team and let us know you did that so we can get things moving here. This job will likely not be sitting out there to apply to uh, open uh, you know, in more than a couple of weeks from now, for sure. Dom, any questions on job number one? We're gonna keep moving. Okay, if you do have interest in any of these jobs, please let us know so we can follow up with you. Uh, this is job number two. This is a more technical position. It's an engineering job, combat systems engineer. We're hiring now. It's in Washington, D.C. It's one of 160 plus jobs in the D.C. metro area. Uh, it's a, I'd, I'd call it an intermediate technical level. Uh, you got to have some engineering background to, 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 to uh, be competitive in this position. Secret must be current to start. The job description you can see here, uh, performing combat systems, engineering, design, technical analysis, for uh, one of their sustainment programs, uh, moderniz ship modernization, uh, the job requirements. You gotta have a bachelor's degree in an engineering or closely related technical field. Uh, four to 10 years of experience in combat and weapons systems in the Navy, four plus years of experience with the Navy or a Navy acquisition program, and ideally suited for a Navy surface warfare officer. Um, Again, we don't usually specify, you know, between enlisted and officer and warrant officer type of jobs, but this particular job is so well aligned uh, and the type of role uh, as, as in, in, for the skills of a Navy surface warfare officer that, that we've listed that as one of the preferences for this job, just to help people kind of single out, you know, whether they meet the uh, requirements here or what the, what, the, what the contract and client is looking for. Nice to have some additional experience there in a 
in an integrated warfare system. Again, pretty technical job. Uh, if you're in the Navy, you probably understand a lot of this uh, and, and could be, uh, you know, with an engineering, Navy engineering background, uh, could be a really solid candidate for this type of work. I'm going to move on to job number three, moving outside of the National Capital Region, a little to the northeast, uh, outside of Baltimore, the Aberdeen Proving Ground, big military base there, huge uh, number of different uh, CACI contracts up there with Army clients uh, and some DOD clients. Uh, this job is as a senior program operations lead. It's one of 140 plus jobs we're looking for in the Baltimore and Aberdeen area. This job is definitely a project management, uh, intermediate, intermediate management type of role. TSSCI is the clearance required to start. And I've highlighted the job description. If you're coming out of the military and you've been a, uh, maybe a senior operations NCO or a, uh, a, 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 a field grade uh, officer in, uh, in the services, you're probably ideally suited for this type of job because look at the, in the operation side of things, look at the, the, the job description here. Uh, you're, ex, you're, you're basically the operations officer for a program, assisting our program manager. Uh, you're executing program operations, schedules, procedures, processes, uh, mission related planning, uh, analyzing and disseminating taskers, juons, op orgs, ex orgs, plan orgs, uh, right up our alley, if you're a planner or operator, uh, again, at that senior NCO or uh, you know, maybe a junior field grade, field grade officer level, uh, ideally suited for that type of uh, background. The job requirements, uh, 10 years with a BS or five years with a, with a master's degree. So the years of experience are less with the higher degree in, this, in the case of this particular job and some experience uh, providing technical support for command and control uh, an ISR operation or organization is uh, would would really be helpful in this type of work. Uh, basically, every military organization uh, headquarters has a C5 ISR. So if you had a if you've had a, a key role or a technical role in a in a military headquarters, you may have the skill set for this uh, type of work. Okay, I'm going to move on to job number four. This is very technical, but now I'm moving out to Ohio. Dom said there were some people from Ohio here. We have nine jobs in the Dayton area, all centered around Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. This job is senior radio frequency technical lead. So you can imagine the type of work this person's doing in electrical engineering, intermediate technical level type work, a secret clearance required to start. Uh, I'm not going to get into the technical job descriptions here, but uh, a lot of work uh, on the electronic warfare side of things, the radio frequency spectrum. Uh, if you got any type of work in that area, you may be interested in this job. And the job requirements, uh, a bachelor's degree in a suitable technical field. You got some examples there, uh, electrical, computer engineering, physics, and the like. Uh, really, the most important job requirement here is the familiarity with Air Force and DOD electronic warfare mission areas, offensive and defensive, uh, you know, with regards to as it relates to military aerospace vehicles, understanding radio frequency physics, propagation, uh, uh, ground and air uh, radar applications. Basically, all the subjects I failed uh, in college are ones that uh, you need to be good at in this particular job. Um, a master's degree, a top secret clearance, and familiarity with uh, some other scientific analysis uh, and some other platforms are nice to have for this job. Very technical. All the jobs at Wright Pat are pretty technical. Uh, and so, you know, they're all in this general area of electronic warfare based on the type of work and the client that we support uh, in the Air Force there at Wright Pat. Moving to Texas. Got a bunch of jobs in Texas. This job, uh, medical logistics technician, one, level one, that is an entry level position. Hiring now, it's in San Antonio and one of 110, over 110 jobs in Texas. Uh, this is in San Antonio. The next job I'm gonna show you is also in San Antonio. This job, no clearance required to start. Uh, this particular job is one of our uh, very active very important contracts where we are providing uh, services to our client in DOD, expeditionary contingency medical material support services. This, this contract is 
playing a very key role in the coronavirus battle across the country because of the contingency medical materials that are being transported uh, you know, from base to base in support of uh, our efforts around the, around the country. This job's at San Antonio, uh, and you can see the uh, other job descriptions, managing uh, material requirements, scheduling, uh, basically helping, helping material and supplies move from one place to another on the medical side of things. Uh, job requirements, only a high school diploma or equivalent uh, required to start. Uh, two years of specialized Air Force logistics experience, medical logistics preferred, uh, around the full range of uh, logistics, uh, receiving, ordering, customer support, inventory, warehousing, uh, material handling equ equipment, all those type of things. Basically, if you've had a, uh, an enlistment tour of duty as a, uh, as a logistician, especially in the Air Force logistics, you'd be perfect for this job um, in San Antonio. Uh, minimum security clearance here. I only have to pass a favorable national agency check with local law and credit. The fact you're coming from the military means you're probably going to be favorable. Uh, that's probably going to be favorable to you, and that, that'll be something that gets checked out as part of your, uh, your application and our security vetting process. Again, an entry level, no clearance required. Uh, just need some Air Force uh, logistics experience in your background, minimal, two years, uh, and you could be the right person for this job in San Antonio. And the next job is in San Antonio as well. This is at Lackland Air Force Base, one of the several military bases in that region. This is one of 50 jobs in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, cybersecurity analyst, intermediate technical level, supporting a DOD client and standard cybersecurity analyst type of work there, uh, protecting the network and devices and hardware from malicious attack and unauthorized access using various uh, tools countermeasures and so forth to uh, keep the net secure. Um, a bachelor's degree or equivalent experience and a minimum of five years experience. And what does that mean, bachelor's degree or equivalent? Generally speaking, it's uh, one and a half years of experience equals a year of uh, a degree producing, uh, and a, a, a degree, uh, uh, like a four-year degree. So this, this job requires four years a four-year degree, bachelor's or BS degree. So the equivalent experience would be six years experience. Um, so basically, if you don't have a degree, you could you could you could apply to this job uh, with six years experience. If you had a bachelor's degree, you need a minimum of five years to go along with the bachelor's degree. Again, the equivalent experience usually a one to one and a half ratio. Uh, if if you if you're even close or questioning it, just Get a hold of us. We'll help you with it. We'll uh, we'll position you in front of the hiring team. We can answer your questions. Uh, you know, but basically, if you if you have the the cybersecurity background, you have the certifications shown here. Three of them: CEH, uh, Certified Ethical Hacker, Network Plus, and Security Plus. If you have those three certifications and uh, and the experience there, with or without the degree, we'd like to hear from you on this particular job. Again, it's open. It's funded and we're hiring now. And this is the last job I've uh, got here for you today. Again, uh, moving out west, uh, further west to California. This job's at Camp Pendleton, uh, where there's a lot of Marines. Uh, this is a senior logistics analyst. This is one of 40 plus jobs we have in California. Uh, most of them centered in the San Diego uh, Pendleton area, but uh, Sacramento, Beale Air Force Base is another uh, small concentration of jobs. This is a senior level logistics position, secret re clearance required to start, uh, supporting a Marine client. And uh, you see the type of work here, managing a network uh, where you are involved in supply chain management, uh, ensuring visibility and inventory, production, material and transit, uh, and being, being uh, proficient on the NTCSS software operation uh, and that software has to do with uh, Navy and Marine aviation logistics. So if you're a Navy or Marine aviation logist logistician and uh, as the requirements show here, uh, you know, uh, eight years experience and you know, we'd like to hear from you on this. Uh, this job requirement you can see here uh, requires a bachelor's degree in a couple different areas, business administration, management, or a related business discipline, and seven to nine years of related Navy, Marine, aviation, logistic experience. Uh, in lieu of the degree, uh, 
as it said there in the second bullet, in addition to any experience substituted for education, eight years experience uh, in, in the supply area. So the, the, the way to look at this is if you don't have the degree, you need eight, experience, eight years of experience to in lieu of the degree, and then you need an additional eight years of experience uh, on top of that if you don't have the degree. So that's 16 years of experience if you don't have the degree. If you have the degree, it's uh, eight years. That's why uh, you know, with the 16, that's uh, really what we'd term a senior level position, looking for a senior logistics NCO or officer coming out of the service, uh, the Marine or, or Navy, ideally with this uh, aviation logistics experience with a working knowledge of this NTCSS software and some of the other uh, systems you see in publications you see there at the bottom of the slide. Again, uh, don't get too hung up on, on all this uh, education and experience, but we try and spell out you know, um, we know that in the military, you know, we don't always have the opportunity to get a degree. Uh, so we try whenever possible with our client to arrange for an experiential equivalent. Um, that doesn't work in every case with every client, but in this case, in this particular job, you, you, again, you have the degree in eight years of experience or no degree, it would total 16 years of experience as the way the job description uh, relates. So we've gone through seven different jobs. We try and touch on uh, the points as it relates to security clearance, uh, job descriptions, experience, um, and those sorts of things. I'd like to hear any questions or comments you have. We're going to close with our uh, contact, contact information slide here from uh, showing our three member team. And I'm also going to give uh, Denise and Robert an opportunity here if uh, they have something to add. Uh, that they want to uh, share with the group while Dominic is looking at uh, any additional questions or comments. I'd like to uh, open it up and see if uh, Robert or Denise have anything you want to add. Denise, first, first to you. Um, hi, no, just, um, I guess the main thing is, uh, you know, you've, you've heard the briefing and um, we're here to assist. The, the biggest thing that we would need from you all is the job number and ensuring that your resume and your skill set matches what we're asking in the job requisition. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll be able to give you um, any assistance as far as advocating for you to the, the hiring manager and, and, and just know um, our advocacy does not guarantee that you're hired, but it will guarantee that you will at least be seen. So just ensure that you're applying to positions where you match the requirements. Um, if you have any questions on clearances or anything else, you know, just let us know. Yeah, that's probably the number one thing we see uh, that it really takes uh, veterans out of the you know, competition for certain jobs is, is the, uh, is the not tailoring the resume to the qualifications. Uh, again, we can help you with that, but it's pretty simple. I mean, you look at the job description, you look at the qualifications. If you have those qualifications, you know, highlight them front and center on your resume. So it's not hard to find, uh, you know, and you know, if the job requires eight years of experience, make sure your eight years of experience add up, uh, and make it easy to add up. Um, and, and that sort of thing. We get asked a lot about resumes, you know, I'd say two pages, uh, two to three pages maximum, um, and really focus on, again, the qualifications that tailor your resume to the job you're applying to and highlighting the clearance that you may need for that particular job. And, okay, uh, before we go to Robert, Dom, any questions there we need to address? I know we're get, running a little short on time. I wanted to get the questions. Yeah, we have a question about uh, intern positions. Uh, the question is that they are looking at intern writing positions and because they're returning to school online this fall, um, are intern positions open remotely or are they in all different locations? Yes. So this is the season for internships. We got a bunch of different flavors of internships. Uh, we have a wounded warrior internship we run with uh, Special Operations Command. Uh, we have internships that we sponsor, a very limited number we sponsor through DOD Skill Bridge on the order of uh, three to five or so per year. Uh, that's a separate program. Uh, you know, it's known as Career Skills Program in the Army. I think the services have a different name for it. It sounds like you're referring to someone who's going back to college. Uh, and so there are university internships as well. Uh, this is a big... Uh, 
uh, internship season. We have about 200 internships that are kicking off this month from uh, several institutions around the country. We're selective in the schools that we intern with. Uh, for that particular person uh, who may be interested in an internship, I'd encourage them to reach out to one of us. We can tell you what the schools are where we have internships with. We don't, uh, we, we've limited our internships to a select number of schools. I don't have them off the top of my head, but their schools are basically where their education aligns with the type of work that we do. So we, you know, the school is producing uh, people in, in, with majors uh, and who need internships in the type of work that they could be doing with us in the future. Uh, be happy to, to connect that person with that question to our uh, internship program manager, uh, who's not part of the veterans team, but we are related in the fact we're all doing outreach and we do have a lot of veterans going back to school. So please reach out to one of us. We'll connect you to the, the information there. Again, only available at a select number of colleges around the country, about a, about a half dozen or so. All right, well, thank you. Uh, here's another one. Um, somebody shared that their understanding is that POTUS recently signed or will soon sign an uh, executive order to support employment opportunities by skills as compared to education. Do uh, CACI job searches take this into effect or will they? And how might that, uh, that influence how um, veterans pursue job opportunities? Yeah. I'm not familiar with this executive order. Can you say the first part of what you said? There was a key word I missed there. You, you talk about, did you say preference or priority? Can you say that? Um, I, sure, this is the first part. Uh, my understanding is that POTUS recently signed or will soon sign an executive order to support employment opportunities by skills as compared to education. Yeah, okay. Well, I haven't seen that executive order. Um, you know, the way it will affect us is that uh, our clients who are in the Department of Defense and the federal government will get that executive order uh, and, and, uh, and we'll probably, and we'll have to comply with it, whatever the, the measures are in that order. If the order says, uh, the, you, you know, it may, it may limit the academic requirements, then the, that might mean mm -hmm. that there's an experience uh, requirement in lieu of the academic, as we talked about here in the presentation. And that wasn't the case for every one of them. So maybe the executive order, uh, again, I'm not familiar with the term, the details, but maybe that executive order will, will mandate that some of uh, the experience piece is required for every job. Uh, well, I'll, we'll have to see that. I, I, that is not the case today. Uh, and again, it wouldn't be us, uh, Khaki, changing the job requirements. Uh, we, we, our job requirements are defined by labor categories, which are provided by our clients. Again, most of them, all of them in the federal space. So whatever executive order you're describing will, will most likely affect those federal clients and the way that they construct future job requirements. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're all for, um, I'd say as a company, we want to do whatever our, our clients uh, feel best and the best uh, type of uh, employee that can can meet their mission requirements. At the same time, we're always for experience in lieu of academic degrees because uh, in many cases, we know in uniform, we don't have the opportunities to get degrees, but we got plenty of opportunity to get hands-on experience. We've in fact gone back to several clients here just recently and said, are you sure you want uh, you know, you, you, you sure you that engineering degree is essential? Uh, because we can find you an uh, Army NCO uh, system administrator with 12 years of experience and do that job uh, very well, but without the engineering degree to, that goes with it that you've mandated in your uh, contract. We've had those discussions with clients because we think it's important to optimize uh, the veteran's experience in every possible way. So it sounds like that executive order may be getting at some of that. I'm not sorry. I, I'm not expert on it, so I'm not going to go into any more. But uh, but again, any any way in which experience can count in lieu of education that uh, can affect our contractual requirements, I'd say we're all we're all in. Okay. Thank you. Um, here's one other question about the medical. Hang on, I'm trying to find it. Um, there's a lot of chat going on. Medical logistics jobs, are they strongly suggested for the Air Force, but not Army, Navy, or Marines? 
that was yeah, so question. all flavors uh that i showed you two here today one was more tailored the, that one uh, medical logistics job was more tailored towards the air force um i would say if if you if you've had a medical logistics job uh in the army navy or air force or coast guard i would look at the other qualifications and see if you had those skill sets and, and clearance and, and then consider applying for that job. I don't think uh, Air Force would necessarily, re, you know, it'd be restrictive to only Air Force uh, in that particular role. Now the job's on an Air Force base, you're dealing with logistics of uh, medical and, and, uh, and air movement. So Air Force has definitely got the uh, sort of uh, the lead on that particular job, all things being equal. Uh, you know, a candidate from the Air Force is probably going to get the nod over someone else for that particular job. We've got plenty of other jobs for logisticians that I didn't bring today that are for, you know, where uh, all services, uh, irrelevant of what service you come from. Some are geared towards the Army because the Army client. Um, we're right now uh, very close to seeing a contract uh, that'll, that'll come out here in the, in the weeks ahead on uh, dozens of army bases around the country, supporting the army uh, logistics, you know, worldwide logistics program. We'll, so in those cases, you know, army logistics might be uh, preferable, uh, get a lead over the, uh, the other services. The, the last job I showed today was Navy uh, Marine Aviation Logistician, uh, which is a very unique uh, area of logistics. Uh, so the answer to the question is, um, it really depends on the job. Uh, I, I'd say be more focused mm -hmm. on the re other requirements, the systems you need to be proficient in. In the case of a, the, the Navy uh, Marine Logis Aviation Logistician job, you have to be familiar with NTCSS. That's a, uh, a, a, an information system that uh, runs the material support for the Navy and, and uh, Marine Aviation. If you don't know that system, you're not going to be competitive for that job. So you literally have to be a Navy or Marine Aviation Logistician to, to be to that to have that expertise. Uh, some of the others may be not be may not be as quite as service specific. So it really depends on the job. Um, again, all other things being equal, if, if you think you got the logistics, the medical logistics background for that med log job in San Antonio, uh, but maybe come from another service, give it a shot. Let us know. Send us a note um, and let us know why you think you're the best person for it, and we'll advocate for you. Again, it may come down to the client voting and say, no, well, we got a bunch of, we, we're going to, you know, we, in this particular case, maybe the best uh, candidates in the Air Force logistician, what have you, but it's worth a, it's worth a shot as, as long as there's not some restrictive system, uh, you know, service specific system experience that you have to have for that, for the particular job like that, like that Marine logistician, uh, avi Marine aviation log job that I mentioned. Thanks. Uh, General Penn, I just want to ask if we have a couple more questions if you have the time. I got the time. If you got the time, I got nothing else to do. This is the most, this is the most important thing we're doing today. So shoot. Thank you. Uh, okay, here's a question. Um, Arabic language related analysis positions seem to require a clearance. Are you willing to sponsor a clearance? And do you think there will be any uncleared contracts positions in the near future? OSE has contracts up for bidding soon and they should be uncleared. Yeah, say again the first part of that piece, uh, Dominic. I, I didn't, wasn't clear enough. Arabic language related analysis positions seem to require a clearance. Are you willing to sponsor? Okay, got it. Arabic language, yeah. Um, Okay, so I, I don't have that job sitting in front of me. Obviously, the, the person asking the question maybe has done some research, which is awesome. You've been on our career site, stay there. Uh, but you know, the, if you have to look at the job description and see what it says. If the job says, uh, you know, clearance sponsorship available, or client willing to sponsor clearance available, or uh, clearance obtainable, any of those phrases uh, would indicate that you, you could apply for that job and be eligible without the clearance to start. Uh, if the clearance is required to start, it's going to say clearance required to start. So it, 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 it really, it'll be spelled out and I would just refer the person to the job description. Most of our linguist positions do require a clearance just off the top of my head. Uh, you know, um, we do see 
the positions that where I see most frequently where the client says we would they would be willing to sponsor a person for their clearance generally fall in the area of cybersecurity. Um, but I, I'm not ruling it out. I just don't have the job in front of me. Uh, but again, it, it probably spelled out there in the job description. Um, and again, most of our jobs do not allow uh, the, the sponsorship opportunities. Most do not. Some do. Some jobs where no clearance is required to start will say that a clearance can be obtainable in the job. But if it doesn't say that, if it doesn't specifically say a clearance can be obtainable or sponsored or what have you, then it, it probably does not offer that opportunity as part of the job. And unfortunately, uh, you know, majority of our positions require the clearance to start. And that's not something we dreamed up. That's, that's from our clients. Uh, you know, our clients in the intelligence community, uh, all the agencies, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and so forth. I mean, you know, in that work environment, you go to work, you got to have the clearance. You, you can't get in the door. And so our clients uh, require that at the, at the time of hire. I know our military members understand that, but it is frustrating. Uh, like me, uh, several years out of the military, top secret clearance for over 30 years, and my clearance expired. So I know what happens. I know there's people out there who've been to, in education and other doing other things after they got out, and and their clearance may have expired, and it gets frustrating trying to get back into the federal uh, and national security space. But uh, but that is that kind of comes with the territory. Uh, there are not a lot of jobs uh, that are going to allow you to get reinvestigated for for your expired clearance while you're in the job. There are some. If it doesn't say that in the job description, it's probably not the case. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, this is the last you know, call for questions in the chat. Last call. <laughs> and and while we're waiting for those questions, yeah, this is Lauren. I just want to kind of you, you know, for those of you who are seeking employment on this call, you've been, just been given a great gift by General Patton and Denise and Robert and CACI. So I want to just kind of took some notes while while General Patton was speaking, and I want to kind of stress some of these high level ones. So first of all, CACI is hiring 100 to 200 veterans a month. There are jobs out there, so don't hesitate. If you are looking for a job right now and you have some of the you have the skills required, start working in your resume. You know, at 4:15, you can get a glass of water and then go back to your desk and start working on your resume. And make sure that when you're doing that, if the job says that they need Network Plus or Security Plus, don't assume that because you handled something bigger that the resume reader or the hiring manager or the recruiter will understand that you have these skills as part of that. Be explicit in every single thing that you do on your resume. If you've done Network Plus for five years, put that down there. That will just make everyone's job easier because when you've got advocates such as General Patton and Denise and Robert, don't, don't waste that, that talent that you've got advocating for you. Um, if you are transitioning and you don't, and you see some jobs on here that look interesting, but you don't have those requirements, there are tons of training opportunities available to you through the military. If you've already transitioned, um, again, work with a member of the PAVE team. There's onward to opportunity. There's no shortage of opportunities for you to get this training. You're going to have to put some time in and, you know, find that grit that led you to be in the military. But go do it because, again, these are good jobs. These are good career opportunities. Um, to work with one of the largest government contractors and most successful. So take the opportunity of uh, take, take advantage of what you've learned today, put your pen to paper, start working on your resumes, go get the training, you know, stay engaged. Don't send the CACI team a resume that's generic, that does not meet their requirements and ask them to look at it. These are great advocates. You know, we like to say that we work on behalf of the veterans, but we have strong alliances with our employers. This team does great stuff on behalf of the veteran community. Don't take advantage of them. Don't, well, don't do it in a negative way. Listen to what they have to say today. Let's use them as the advocates. You know, they are very good at what they do. So um, just keep all of that stuff in mind. You know, I'm going to post something on LinkedIn later. Um, and we'll have this recording up so others can view it uh, at a later date. And I think that was great. And Dom, any other questions? All right, last question. Um, is applying 90 plus days before I retire enough time? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I'd say uh, the first thing is know when your work availability date is. Um, you know, uh, it could be when you begin terminal leave. It could be uh, you want to take some leave after your separation, retirement. So, you know, determine what your work availability is. Not That may not necessarily be the day you separate. Uh, you may want to take a little breathing space. You may want to do something else, or you may want to start, you know, as you begin your terminal. So know what that date is and then back off of that date. And I'd say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the six month mark before that date, you're, you're making contact with a veterans team. Uh, you've narrowed down, uh, you know, what companies you want to work for, you, you know what you want to do and where you want to do it. And you've narrowed down uh, to a list of companies. You've done your, you've done your homework on the culture, the type of work uh, that those companies offer and so forth. Uh, ideally you've narrowed it down to CACI is one of those. So at six month mark, you're, you're reaching out to one of the three of us and telling us you're interested. You send us your resume, tell us the type of work you're interested in the place you want to work. We might send you some job links to, to review. Uh, and then, you know, I, I do think at the, uh, the 90 day mark, uh, short of your separation date, somewhere in that 60 to 90 day mark, you, you get your application in. Um, you are going to have the opportunity to say when your work availability is. That could have some bearing on whether you're hired or not. Like most of the jobs I showed you today, if you said you're available 90 days, uh, it's too late. We're, we're going to fill these jobs in 30 days. Uh, some, you know, but, but these jobs are typical of the other positions we have. Again, these jobs repeat themselves. We win other contracts where more work comes open. So the type of jobs that I showed you today uh, may not be the ones that are on the, uh, on the career site in 90 days uh, or 90 days out from when you separate, but there's going to be others like them. Again, you can reach out to the veterans team like us and you can ask us the question, uh, what's the prospects of this particular job? Uh, all the jobs I showed you today are funded mm -hmm. on contract. A number of the positions you're going to see on our career site are contingent on winning a future contract. So we might tell you something like, oh, you're, you're going to get 90 days. Your work availability is 90 days from now. Uh, the job you, you're interested in and you applied to is contingent on winning a contract. We expect to win in the next 60 days. It could work out perfectly where you're coming available when the con when the work is coming on contract and things line up nicely. You might be looking for a job in uh, 90 days and the, and the contract is contingent on a contract where award is not known for a year from now, which would not probably work for you. So again, it's based, you know, some of it's based on the, the, the status of the contract, whether it's on contract or contingent. And in other cases, uh, you know, it's based on the, um, you know, when, when your work availability is. And, uh, but I think as a general rule, 90 days, somewhere in a 69 days mark is a good time to get, uh, you know, an application in, uh, join our now six months out or so join our talent network, uh, set up a profile so you can start getting job alerts for, uh, jobs in, uh, that match your preferences and so forth. So all those kind of things are mm -hmm. things you're doing as a run up towards your separation date, your avail work availability date. And just, I'll, I'll just summarize that, uh, you know, getting a job is your new job. Uh, it's really hard work. Be persistent, mm -hmm. expect rejections, um, but persevere, uh, be patient in the process. Um, I've had people, you know, submit an application on one day and the next day they're asking me for their, their job status. Well, it doesn't work that fast. Uh, it, there, there is some patience required uh, and processing time and so forth. But uh, you know, I think getting on the radar with applications in, uh, getting on the radar of the veterans team six months out, an application in the 60 to 90 day mark is probably the right time frame as long as you're accurately depicting the work availability date and, you, and then you can have that conversation with the recruiter. We might, we, might, we might give you a contingent offer today knowing that you're not available for 90 days because we like you so much, you're fully qualified. And we'll say, you know, give you a contingent offer that as soon as you separate, uh, you're out of the military uh, or you're on terminal, that the offer would be presented to you, you could accept and you could start work. I mean, that happens a lot. So uh, again, I, I think that uh, 90 day mark is probably a, a pretty good uh, uh, milestone. Great. Thank you, uh, General Pat. I just want to thank you and uh, your team for joining us today for this PAVE Connect employer session. Uh, it was really informative, and I think you provided a lot of veterans with great information.
So thanks again. Hey, thanks a lot. I, I want to thank you all for the opportunity. I didn't give uh, my colleague Robert a chance. We kind of skipped over him with the questions. I just want to, if we had a second, and turn to Robert. Robert, anything you want to throw in here at the end uh, that we didn't cover? I know we covered a lot, but you talk to veterans every day. And uh, is there any other uh, pointer or two or throw, you want to throw out there for the good of the group? Please. And just let, let's get you into our program. All of you qualify for our program. Let's just get you into our program. And just email me at the CACI veteran support at CACI.com. I actually just responded to Ashley Wood, who reached out to our team. Oh, good. I'm going to line out and just guide her a little bit further so you can understand the um, contract process. So we do the hands on approach. No other company does what we do. So <laughs> we'll utilize us and just reach out to me there in our program. And that's it. Now that, that is our commitment to you. If you reach out to us, we're going to reach back to you. It's not going to be an automated response. Now that, that you have to reach out to us too, to, to sort of, you know, you know, begin that engagement. Uh, you know, we, we do have an automated system where if you apply to a job and you're advanced in the system or you're rejected uh, or no longer in consideration, you are going to get an automated response in our system to keep you updated. But if, if you contact us, you know, the, the members of our three person team here, we're going to get back to you in some form and uh, hopefully ground guide you into the company uh, and allow you to join the ranks of a, of a great company, 8,100 veterans strong right now, uh, 23,000 employees worldwide. And uh, love to see you join the ranks and continue your mission with CACI. With that, uh, Lauren and Dom, thanks for the time. Thanks for the support uh, and, and for everybody out there, your interest, your engagement. We look forward to talking to all of you. Uh, and just tell us, you know, where we, we met you yep. on the, uh, the PAVE session here today, uh, June 20, uh, what day is it? <laughs> June 29th, <laughs> been a long day. June 29th, 20, June 29th PAVE session. And uh, we connected with you and PAVE Connect and, and that now makes us uh, you know, makes us one of your resources. So as Lauren said, please use us. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks yeah. for your service. Happy 4th yep. of July.